Neoclassicism is the name given to Western movements in the decorative and visual arts, literature, theater, music, and architecture that draw inspiration from the classical art and culture of ancient Greece or ancient Rome. Neoclassicism was born in Rome in the mid-18th century, but its popularity spread all over Europe. As a generation of European art students finished their grand tour and returned from Italy to their home countries with newly rediscovered Greco-Roman ideals, the main neoclassical movement coincided with the 18th century age of enlightenment and continued into the early 19th century, latterly competing with Romanticism. In architecture, the style continued throughout the 19th, 20th and up to the 21st century. European neoclassicism in the visual arts began c. 1760 in opposition to the then-dominant Baroque and Rococo styles. Rococo architecture emphasizes grace, ornamentation and asymmetry. Neoclassical architecture is based on the principles of simplicity and symmetry which were seen as virtues of the arts of Roman ancient Greece, and were more immediately drawn from 16th century Renaissance classicism. Each neo-classicism selects some models among the range of possible classics that are available to it, and ignores others. The neoclassical writers and talkers, patrons and collectors, artists and sculptors of 1765 to 1830 paid homage to an idea of the generation of Phidias. But the sculpture examples they actually embraced were more likely to be Roman copies of Hellenistic sculptures. They ignored both archaic Greek art and the works of late antiquity. The Rococo art of ancient Palmyra came as a revelation. Through engravings in woods, the ruins of Palmyra, even Greece was all but unvisited, a rough backwater of the Ottoman Empire, dangerous to explore. So neoclassicist appreciation of Greek architecture was mediated through drawings and engravings, which subtly smoothed and regularized, corrected, and restored the monuments of Greece, not always consciously. Overview Neoclassicism is a revival of the styles and spirit of classic antiquity inspired directly from the classical period, which coincided and reflected the developments in philosophy and other areas of the Age of Enlightenment, and was initially a reaction against the excesses of the preceding Rococo style. While the movement is often described as the opposed counterpart of Romanticism, this is a great oversimplification that tends not to be sustainable when specific artists or works are considered. The case of the supposed main champion of late neoclassicism, Angra, demonstrates this especially well. The revival can be traced to the establishment of formal archaeology. The writings of Johann Joachim Winkelmann were important in shaping this movement in both architecture and the visual arts. His books Thoughts on the Imitation of Greek Works in Painting and Sculpture and Geschichte der Kunst des Altertums were the first to distinguish sharply between ancient Greek and Roman art, and define periods within Greek art, tracing a trajectory from growth to maturity and then imitation or decadence that continues to have influence to the present day. Winkelmann believed that art should aim at noble simplicity and calm grandeur, and praised the idealism of Greek art, in which he said we find not only nature at its most beautiful but also something beyond nature, namely certain ideal forms of its beauty, which, as an ancient interpreter of Plato teaches us, come from images created by the mind alone. The theory was very far from new in Western art, but his emphasis on close copying of Greek models was, the only way for us to become great or if this be possible, inimitable, is to imitate the ancients. With the advent of the Grand Tour, a fad of collecting antiquities began that laid the foundations of many great collections spreading a neoclassical revival throughout Europe. Neoclassicism in each art implies a particular canon of a classical model, 
In English, the term neoclassicism is used primarily of the visual arts, the similar movement in English literature, which began considerably earlier, is called Augustan literature. This, which had been dominant for several decades, was beginning to decline by the time neoclassicism in the visual arts became fashionable. Though terms differ, the situation in French literature was similar. In music, the period saw the rise of classical music, and neoclassicism is used of 20th century developments. However, the operas of Christoph Willibald Gluck represented a specifically neoclassical approach, spelt out in his preface to the published score of Alchester, which aimed to reform opera by removing ornamentation, increasing the role of the chorus in line with Greek tragedy, and using simpler unadorned melodic lines. The term neoclassical was not invented until the mid-19th century, and at the time the style was described by such terms as the true style, reformed, and revival. What was regarded as being revived varying considerably. Ancient models were certainly very much involved, but the style could also be regarded as a revival of the Renaissance and especially in France as a return to the more austere and noble Baroque of the age of Louis XIV, for which a considerable nostalgia had developed as France's dominant military and political position started a serious decline. Ingres' coronation portrait of Napoleon even borrowed from late antique consular diptychs and the Carolingian revival, to the disapproval of critics. Neoclassicism was strongest in architecture, sculpture and the decorative arts, where classical models in the same medium were relatively numerous and accessible, examples from ancient painting that demonstrated the qualities that Winkelmann's writing found in sculpture were in a lacking. Winkelmann was involved in the dissemination of knowledge of the first large Roman paintings to be discovered at Pompeii and Herculaneum in like most contemporaries except for Gavin Hamilton, was unimpressed by them, citing Pliny the Younger's comments on the decline of painting in his period. As for painting, Greek painting was utterly lost. Neoclassicist painters imaginatively revived it, partly through bas-relief friezes, mosaics and pottery painting, and partly through the examples of painting and decoration of the high renaissance of Raphael's generation, frescoes in Nero's Domasoria, Pompeii and Herculaneum, and through renewed admiration of Nicolas Poussin. Much neoclassical painting is more classicizing in subject matter than in anything else. A fierce but often very badly informed dispute raged for decades over the relative merits of Greek and Roman art, with Winkelmann and his fellow Hellenists generally the winning side. Painting and printmaking, it is hard to recapture the radical and exciting nature of early neoclassical painting for contemporary audiences, it now strikes even those writers favorably inclined to it as insipid and almost entirely uninteresting to us. Some of Kenneth Clark's comments on Anton Raphael Meng's ambitious Parnassus at the Villa Albani by the artist who his friend Winkleman described as the greatest artist of his own and perhaps of later times. The drawings subsequently turned into prints of John Flaxman used very simple line drawing and figures mostly in profile to depict the Odyssey and other subjects, and once fired the artistic youth of Europe but are now neglected while the history paintings of Angelica Kaufmann, mainly a portraitist, are described as having an unctuous softness and tediousness by Fritz Novotny. Rococo frivolity and Baroque movement had been stripped away but many artists struggled to put anything in their place, and in the absence of ancient examples for history painting, other than the Greek vases used by Flaxman, Raphael tended to be used as a substitute model, as Winkelmann recommended. The work of other artists, who could not easily be described as insipid, combines aspects of Romanticism with a generally neoclassical style, and form part of the history of both movements. The German-Danish painter Asmus Jacob Carstens finished very few of the large mythological works that he planned, 
leaving mostly drawings and color studies which often succeed in approaching Winkleman's prescription of noble simplicity and calm grandeur. Unlike Carson's unrealized schemes, the etchings of Giovanni Battista Piranesi were numerous and profitable, and taken back by those making the grand tour to all parts of Europe. His main subject matter was the buildings and ruins of Rome, and he was more stimulated by the ancient than the modern. The somewhat disquieting atmosphere of many of his Veduta becomes dominant in his series of 16 prints of Cass Reed and Venzione whose oppressive, cyclopean architecture conveys dreams of fear and frustration. The Swiss-born Johann Heinrich Fusseler spent most of his career in England, and while his fundamental style was based on neoclassical principles, his subjects and treatment more often reflected the Gothic strain of Romanticism, and sought to evoke drama and excitement. Neoclassicism in painting gained a new sense of direction with the sensational success of Jacques-Louis David's Oath of the Horatii at the Paris Salon of 1785. Despite its evocation of republican virtues, this was a commission by the royal government, which David insisted on painting in Rome. David managed to combine an idealist style with drama and forcefulness. The central perspective is perpendicular to the picture plane, made more emphatic by the dim arcade behind, against which the heroic figures are disposed as in a frieze, with a hint of the artificial lighting and staging of opera, and the classical colouring of Nicolas Poussin. David rapidly became the leader of French art, and after the French Revolution became a politician with control of much government patronage and art. He managed to retain his influence in the Napoleonic period, turning to frankly propagandistic works, but had to leave France for re-exile in Brussels at the Bourbon Restoration. David's many students included Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra, who saw himself as a classicist throughout his long career. Despite her mature style that has an equivocal relationship with the main current of neoclassicism, and many later diversions into Orientalism and the troubadour style that are hard to distinguish from those of his unabashedly romantic contemporaries, except by the primacy his works always give to drawing. He exhibited at the Salon for over 60 years, from 1802 into the beginnings of Impressionism, but his style, once formed, changed little. Fantasy depiction of the Appine Way, etching by Giovanni Battista Piranesi, 1756. Angelica Kaufmann, Venus induces Helen to fall in love with Paris, 1790. Asmus Jacob Carstens, Night and Her Children, Sleep and Death, 1794, Black Chalk on Paper, 745 by 985 centimeters. Ingraversion of Neoclassicism, Oedipus and the Sphinx, 1808. Sculpture. If neoclassical painting suffered from a lack of ancient models, neoclassical sculpture tended to suffer from an excess of them. Although examples of actual Greek sculpture of the classical period, beginning in about 500 BC were then very few, the most highly regarded works were mostly Roman copies. The leading neoclassical sculptors enjoyed huge reputations in their own day, but are now less regarded, with the exception of Jean-Antoine Hoden, whose work was mainly portraits, very often as busts, which do not sacrifice a strong impression of the sitter's personality to idealism. His style became more classical as his long career continued, and represents a rather smooth progression from Rococo charm to classical dignity. Unlike some neoclassical sculptors he did not insist on his sitters wearing Roman dress or being unclothed. He portrayed most of the great figures of the Enlightenment, and traveled to America to produce a statue of George Washington, as well as busts of Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin and other luminaries of the New Republic.
Antonio Carnova and the Dane Bertel Thorvaldsen were both based in Rome, and as well as portraits produced many ambitious life-size figures and groups, both represented the strongly idealizing tendency in neoclassical sculpture. Carnova has a lightness and grace, where Thorvaldsen is more severe, the difference is exemplified in their respective groups of the three graces. All these, and Flaxman, were still active in the 1820s, and Romanticism was slow to impact sculpture, where versions of Neoclassicism remained the dominant style for most of the 19th century. An early Neoclassicist in sculpture was the Swede Johann Tobias Sergel. John Flaxman was also, or mainly, a sculptor, mostly producing severely classical reliefs that are comparable in style to his prints. He also designed and modeled neoclassical ceramics for Josiah Wedgwood for several years. Johann Gottfried Schadow and his son Rudolf, one of the few neoclassical sculptors to die young, were the leading German artists. With Franz Anton von Zahner in Austria, the late Baroque Austrian sculptor Franz Zaver Messerschmitt turned to neoclassicism in mid-career, shortly before he appears to have suffered some kind of mental crisis after which he retired to the country and devoted himself to the highly distinctive character heads of bald figures pulling extreme facial expressions. Like Piranesa's Cassari, these enjoyed a great revival of interest during the age of psychoanalysis in the early 20th century. The Dutch neoclassical sculptor Matthew Kessels studied with Thorvaldsen and worked almost exclusively in Rome. Since prior to the 1830s the United States did not have a sculpture tradition of its own, save in the areas of tombstones, whether veins and ship figureheads, the European neoclassical manner was adopted there, and it was to hold sway for decades and is exemplified in the sculptures of Horatio Greenoff, Hiram Powers, Randolph Rogers and William Henry Reinhardt. Resting Fawn, 1770, Johann Tobias Sergel, Voltaire by Jean-Antoine Hoden, 1778, one of several different versions, Monument to Copernicus by Thorwaldsen, Warsaw, Le Triomphe de 1810, Jean-Pierre Courtaut, From the Arc de Triomphe, Hercules and the Horses of Diomedes, Johann Gottfried Shadow, Study for the Brandenburg Gate Triumphal Arch. Discobolo's preparing to throw, Matthew Kessel's, Chatsworth House, one of the character heads, of Franz Zaver Messerschmitt, Nydia, Randolph Rogers, 1859.